If there's one thing the survival-like genre needs more of, it's cars. If I wanted to plot about a field fighting shambling hordes of the undead, I'd go to Aberdeen. This year, the guzzling gods have blessed us with not one but two vehicular survival-likes, Maniac at the start of the year, and now Earl vs the Mutants. There's probably more, but like 12 billion games come out every day on Steam, so... Ain't nobody got time for that! Earl vs the Mutants places you behind the wheel of a post-apocalyptic, fuel-injected killing machine, and yet somehow makes the whole thing feel pedestrian. Cruising down desolate highways and over grassy rolling hills, pursued by the undead and the other denizens of the end times, Vampire Survivors meets Mad Max. It sounds like a blasting concept, but here it falls a little flat. Each level starts you in a box standard automobile with a box standard gun. Kill muties, level up, simple as that. Each level up gives you various stat and percentage adjustments like speed, defense, firepower. Along the way you'll meet Edna, occasionally dropping you new weapons to replace your current ones, and drones which add hovering firepower to your car. Rarer still are the limited time weapons that you get for a quick boost of power. The combat is fast, splatting hordes of mutants is never not fun, and is at least a newer spin on the genre. But Earl, like any man his age, has his struggles. Weapon changes are rare and usually come at the end of a run, which to me is a little bit backwards. Upgrades feel a lot less meaningful if I'm not applying them to a particular weapon, if I'm just applying them to my standard gun with hopes of getting something at the end which matches where I put my points throughout a run. The upgrades generally are a little bit mundane. All percentage and stat and number changes. I'm not a maths nerd so this doesn't do much for me. The drones, the additional weapons that float around you, give limited options. There are, I think, four types of drone. The healing drone is pretty much mandatory, so you'll get to pick two of three to fill out your other two slots, or you could just take more healing drones. That's not much variety and flavor, and I didn't really feel like my runs were unique in any meaningful way. I was equipping the same weapons, the same drones, on similar maps against the same enemies. Then there are design elements which are just at odds with each other. A game designed around high speed movement and fast combat should reward these things, not punish the player for engaging in that playstyle. Enemies that explode on contact and piles of red barrels hiding off screen just when you decide to boost in their direction are the most common run enders here. This turns to times when the game should be at its best, tearing around the post apocalypse in a muscle car at high speeds into some of its worst. The second level really begins to take the piss with the amount of exploding jelly enemies that it throws at you. Unfortunately, exploding enemies seems to be a crutch that Earl falls back on often in the search of injecting some difficulty into the game. And that's just not fun. Enemy variety is a mixed bag. I got really excited in my first run of the full game when a biker and quad biker showed up. My imagination started to run wild with the possibilities of road warring my way down the post-apocalyptic highway, accosted by war boys on each side. This was exciting as it added an element that wasn't there during my time with the demo of the game. Instead, that was that. I killed both of them and never saw a fast moving enemy again. The next new enemy I discovered was green slimes. Neat. But these green slimes, they arrived the same way that any other enemy had arrived already in the game. It immediately reminded me of the green slimes from Death Must Die. After small groups of enemies trickling in from all sides, the first green slimes start to show up in a tsunami from all sides. It's the first real test of your build. It separates those ready to fight death from those who can barely fight off a cold. In Earl vs the Mutants, some of the mutants are suddenly slimes, and they act exactly like mutants in gameplay terms. The bosses do get vehicles, and that does inject some fun into the game, but it feels a bit too little too late. To get to those bosses, you have to trek through levels that lack anything of any real substance. Drab wasteland, drab desert, winter level, all peppered with the occasional ghost vegetation. Spooky. No burnt out cars, no ruins, no small irradiated hamlets, no skeletons of super mutants, no unexploded nuclear bombs, no nothing, nothing of consequence to tell the story of this world. For some reason the map has limits, which would tell me that there's points of interest contained within, but there just isn't. It's so empty, and not in a desolate, 
and depressing end of the world kind of way. I think the saddest thing about Earl vs. the Mutants is that it's not really far away from the demo I played at the start of the year. Other than the two enemies and vehicles I saw, which I'm starting to believe was some sort of hallucination, the slimes, the game being needlessly broken into three levels, I didn't get any more out of it than I did the demo. Don't get me wrong, there are moments of fun here. I'm not saying the game is completely without merit, but I found everything around these fun elements to be pretty uninspired, which is a shame. If it wasn't for the pretty low price point, I would have come away from this game feeling very sour. It's sad as the concept has potential, but the execution falls way short. I'm no game dev, but if it were up to me, and if I put on my fake little game dev hat, I'd say reduce some of the numbers of explosions to make them feel more meaningful, inject some life into this world outside of drab dead plants, and fill it with waves of mobile enemies to chase and harass the player across the wasteland. While playing Earl vs. the Mutants, my mind started to wander to the demo of Fumes that I played earlier in the year. I think that game definitely embraces the feel that this game is aiming for, but ultimately, Earl falls flat. The game's so-so, it's paper thin, I don't know how you managed to make the post-apocalypse feel so mundane. It doesn't live up to its potential, which is a shame, really. Check it out by all means if enough in this video has interested you, but just temper your expectations. If this style of game is something you're interested in, I would highlight Maniac here. Similar gameplay style, similar price, but far better in terms of execution. But how do you plan on surviving the upcoming apocalypse? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm not usually so negative, and I do look for the silver linings in every game I play, but my reaction here was so visceral, I just had to capture it. If you enjoyed this, there'll be a video on screen. It might be positive, it might be negative. I'm, I'm racking up a few negative ones now. Not my intention. And also, if you're a roguelike or survivor-like fan, do drop me a subscribe so you can get notified next time I pop up to talk about a different game. Thank you so much for the gift of your time, and I'll see you next time. Bye!